Earlier we've been looking at the quadratic equation and how to use that to solve quadratics. In other words, to find the zeros or the roots. Um, and what I would like to do now is show you once where the quadratic equation actually comes from. So the idea, remember, is that uh, we were taking, uh, let me see here, we were starting with a general form quadratic. So we were starting with something like y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Now we were trying to take the roots of it, in other words, uh, set y equals zero and say ax squared plus bx plus c. So we're basically trying to start with this. Okay, so maybe uh, I'll write that down. So, you know, start, start here. And the idea is to finish with the quadratic equation, which is x equals minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac, all that over 2a. So you want to sort of finish here. Okay, so that's the goal here. So finish here. So we want to start here and finish here. Now, how do we do it? Well, the key is, uh, well, it doesn't just come from outer space. I mean, when I gave you this, this equation here, or when a teacher gives it to you, or when you just look it up, I mean, it looks pretty complicated, but it's actually highly useful. Right? This works for any quadratic equation, uh, and this works to solve this. In other words, this x here, that's, that's what it tells you. This x gets you these solutions. But how in the world do we get from here to here? Most people never bother to look at that. I think they just sort of accept that this is the equation and away they go. But we actually now have the tools in order to solve this. So what I'd like to do is uh, show you how to do that. And the way we go about doing it is first of all, uh, we have to just um, start with general form, which we just uh, wrote down. So this is the key here, we start with general form, and we're going to use um, what we looked at before, which is completing the square. So we just complete the square to get vertex form. We've been looking at that before. And then we solve. So that's, the, that's our goal here. We're going to start with the general form. We're going to complete the square on this to get vertex form, and then we're gonna solve it, and hopefully we can make it look like this. That's the goal. Now I have to uh, warn you, it's actually quite gross as far as uh, the algebra goes, but it's totally doable. I mean, we have the, the tools now that we need to do it. It's just not nice to look at, and there's a reason why um, you know, we do it once and then hopefully never look at it again. And that's because uh, this is so handy to have it in this form. But you can actually, you can always complete the square on anything you want and then uh, get the answer. So what we have to do then is we're going to complete the square on the general form here. We're gonna get it in vertex form and then we're gonna solve for x. So the very first step then, well, let's just get cracking here. So I'll just uh, add a new page and away we go. So we're gonna start with this, zero equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, if we're gonna complete the square, what we have to do is, first of all, take out any common factors of x squared and x. And so in that sense, then I'm going to have to take out something uh, that's common to both of these. Now, I'm going to take out an a from both of them. So that means I'm gonna be left with x squared. Now, the thing is, there's no a here, but I'm going to uh, take out an a anyway. Um, and the way I do that then, of course, is I can just make it b over a, all that times x. It turns out that will be my first step here. Now the reason why this is the same is because if I take a times x squared, in other words, if I, if I expand this in order to check if it really gives me this, a times x squared gives me ax squared, and a times b over a, well the a's would cancel out, I just have b, so yeah, I just have a b there. So this may look a little bit strange, but this is what we have to do here. We have to take out an a, even if there wasn't an a in front of this x term. So that's the first step. Now the next step in uh, completing the square is to take this right here and divide this by two. So that means I have b over two a. Okay, so that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to take half of that, and then we're supposed to take that and square it. So that gives me b squared 
over at the top here, b squared, and then I have to take 2 and square it, that gives me 4, and a and square it, that gives me a squared. Okay, so b squared over 4a squared. Now what I'm going to do then is add that and subtract that. Okay, so I'm going to take that right there and say, therefore, 0 equals a times x squared plus b over a times x. I'm going to say plus b squared over 4a squared. And I'm going to have to do a minus b squared over 4a squared. Now I put it in different colors because I want to get rid of the blue one, basically. Yeah, that's the goal here is we do this because it turns out this this stuff right here in black is going to factor um, even though it may look really ugly but you can totally factor it so now i want to kick this right here out of the parentheses i want to kick it over to the right but that means i have to multiply everything by a so that means in this case then i've got zero equals i'm going to just keep rewriting it so x squared plus b over a x plus b squared over 4a squared and then I'm going to multiply everything here by a in other words this b squared I'm going to have an a on the top here this a is going to cancel out this one right here in other words I'm going to have minus b squared over 4a because the a on the top took out the squared that was here so this is all I'm left with is like this and maybe one last step I can do for the moment then is to actually factor this. So this right here now, I can factor it. It may look super ugly, but I gave you a trick I think before that said, whenever you're trying to use uh, or completing the square like this, this thing is going to factor to be x and then plus or minus whatever this is. So x plus b over 2a, all that squared. And then of course I just have the other junk on the end here. So minus b squared over 4a plus c. And doesn't this look lovely so far? <laughs> um, what I can do then is I'm going to take this. I think what I want to do is actually just copy it because I'd like to use it on another page it's just so we can continue with it. So I'm going to go here and paste. So there I go. Whoops. Whoa. So I just want to take this thing right here and then keep going now. So if I take this, um, what I can do now, since it's already nice and factored, uh, we can take a look at a couple things here. First of all, this one right here, this is the axis of symmetry. Well, not exactly, but it turns out, you know when you're doing vector form, uh, sorry, um, vertex form, we were looking at that before that the vertex was, do you remember it went like this, x minus h quantity squared plus K, this was vertex form, and the vertex was at h comma k. Now in this case then, that tells me the x value for it is actually negative b over 2a, and that's because, remember, this is supposed to be a negative h, this is a plus right now, so I have to make this negative. So this actually tells me where the axis of symmetry comes from, this is the x value of it. The y value is just this other junk, which means the y value of the vertex is just minus b squared over 4a plus c. A little bit ugly, but at least just showing you where things came from. That's kind of neat, I think, that uh, that's where the axis of symmetry came from. So we've essentially just sort of derived uh, where the axis of symmetry comes from. So that's kind of nice, but we can actually go a little bit further here. What we can do, let's take this piece right here and then actually keep working with it. So what I'm going to do then is just take this and try to play around with it so that I can get it looking in the right form. Remember, I want it to look like minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac, all that over 2a. So what I need to do that now is um, keep going. So I can't stop yet. So I have to keep going with this right here and then just try to solve it. So right now I have this in vertex form. That's the good news. Okay, so this is vertex form. This is the vertex form for any quadratic. It's now written in this form here. So that's nice. But remember I said the original goal was to start with general form. We complete the square to get vertex form. We're done, we're there. Now we have to solve which means now we're just trying to get x on its own. 
So the very first step I think I would like to do is to move this junk on to the other side. In other words, forget about this zero. Let's start moving things over. So I'm going to move this minus b squared over 4a. I'm going to move it over to the left side. That'll be positive b squared over 4a. Now I want to move this plus c over, so that gives me minus c. Again, all that equals a times x plus b over 2a. All that squared. 